It's a pleasure well, to be well. here and uh, to know about the activities and events uh, organized by ARPA. Yes, uh, I'm presenting the topic of my uh, dissertation, which is about uh, the post of small state industry, which is about the great powers. Um, the small state politics is gaining an increasing interest in academic community, due in large part to the end of the Cold War and the formation of small states in the wake of dissolution of larger national constructions such as the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia. Over 200 legally sovereign states in the world are characterized as small and their strategies of forming, shaping and pushing political course in a new world order has been changed with sharp contrast in relative condition according to size, power and geopolitical uh, status quo in regional and international politics. The small state concept barely begins to address the issue of how they might be able to maintain their policy priorities through cooperating or influencing larger and stronger powers in global politics. They exist in large numbers and are therefore not only prominent members of the International Society of States, but are also empirically relevant units that are able to change political course of major powers. As a case study, I've chosen Armenia and its uh, foreign policy priorities caught between competing interests of the European Union and the Russian Federation. It's a historical research analysis, an assessment of countries' political transformation and uh, development through the prism of the balance of power theory of the international relations. Therefore, the research utilizes a combination of historical research methods and the qualitative study of the IR. Of IR. And why Armenia? Because the nature of Armenia's relationship with major powers is complex. It's very topical, lively, freely. It gives me opportunity to meet with former and current state officials for interviews, uh, questions and answer sessions. The multilingual aspect of literature, documents and archival sources make the research very interesting. So since 1990s, the country has to cope with a serious dilemma in the definition of its foreign policy. On the one hand, it closely cooperates with Russia, despite the role of the Soviet troops and MVD, Minister of Internal Affairs, that initiated the Karabakh War by organizing Kota operation entering Armenian villages, uh, arresting both men and women, as well as evicting people from their houses and uh, homeland. However, Armenia's relations we're getting closer with Russia because Russia was directly involved uh, in uh, peace negotiations. And by the time, it also became heavily dependent from Russia in such areas as security and economy. The major important part of Armenia's economy is owned by Russia today. Nuclear power station, hydro power station, Razdan, Kaskad, aluminium factory, mobile telecom company, full control of national railway network, etc. Over 2 million Armenians live in Russia. The large portion of remittances comes from Russia. Armenia is a member of several Russian-led international organizations such as CIA, CSTO, Eurasian Economic Union. Russia has three military bases outside of Russia, two, uh, one of them in Armenia, two others in Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. And together with Russian <coughs> bases, Armenia is guarding its border with Turkey, which is a NATO member state. And here the question is, uh, that I have, and the question arises, isn't Armenia also a security guarantor for Russia and a platform uh, in the South Caucasus region? The scope of Armenian-Russian relations is presented and described as Russia is Armenia's strategic partner, security guarantor, only choice, historical ally, etc. I say, is it so? No doubt. Russia is a strong and important actor, and Armenian-Russian relations are tied. These are symbiotic relations. Uh, Yerevan needs Moscow, and Moscow needs Yerevan. Armenia's main security threat today comes from its eastern border. The danger is on the Armenian-Azerbaijani side and around Nagorno-Karabakh. Where is the Russian military base? It is deployed in Armenia's Turkish border. The Article 3 of Armenian Russian military agreement on the deployment of Russia's military base in Gyumri states that this quote, quote, I'm quoting, this agreement is to protect Russia's interests and only then secure Armenia's defense together with Armenian forces. Armenia is a member of CSTO, but will CSTO or Russia build 
Sh or Russia show military support should war strike between Armenia and Azerbaijan? My answer is no. In fact, the deployment of Russia's base in Armenia is more of Russia's security interest in the contact line with the NATO member state country. Armenia's security ties with Russia come with risks. Russia proved itself to be an unpredictable and at times unreliable actor. The 2008 Russia -George Russo Georgian War pitted Armenia's most important neighbor against its security partner. Georgia is Armenia's link to the outside world and a vital corridor to, for trade into and out of Armenia. The war cut off that trade route, stopping deliveries of wet fuel and other products into Armenia, leading to shortages. The collapse in relations between Russia and Turkey also complicated the region's already delicate security framework in 2013-14, increasing tension between Armenia and Turkey. Close security ties facilitate large-scale Russian investment into the Armenian economy, allowing Russian firms to dominate key sectors of the economy, particularly the energy sector. In what began as Armenian embrace of Russia as a security provider, the relationship steadily expanded and deepened as Armenia's threat perception and inherent insecurity from the unresolved Karabakh conflict only drive the country closer to Russia. It is an imperative for Armenia to bring Yerevan Moscow relations on an equal footing regardless of their bilateral relations and Armenia's relations with other partners. And how is the situation with the EU? In the early 1990s, the European communities, because in 1990s it was not the European Union, it was the European communities, launched its policy of democratic transition, aiming to bring the free Caucasian countries into political and economic orbits. But in the 1990s, as I said, EU was itself an organization in formation. And um, Caucasus gained EU's full attention only in 1996, when uh, the Partnership and Cooperation Agreement was signed in Luxembourg between Arme Armenia, like, uh, uh, for, with the free uh, Caucasian states, uh, states from one side and the European Union from the other side. This agreement entered into force only three years after, in 1999. So basically, uh, in the 1990s, uh, the situation in uh, regional geopolitics and in Eurasian geopolitics was like um, Russia was still power, but it was weak power. Europe was becoming an economic power, and a superpower in the world politics was the United States. However, in 1994, the United States is signing a contract of the century with Azerbaijan and um, Western oil companies, where the division of stakes and uh, profits had the following outline among major partners. Azerbaijan 20%, British Petroleum 17.127%, USA 17.0.0. 0.1%. So basically, with this agreement, uh, the United States is showing its uh, priority country and interest in uh, Caspian Basin oil. Uh, looking at Russian-Armenian relations uh, through a second world theory of the balance of threat, we can say that the strategic partnership conducted after the collapse of the USSR was Russia's fear from the US policy and interest in the South Caucasus. In the last decade of the 20th century, the European Union came into the political arena as a major power, becoming Russia's main rival in the race for economic dominance in their shared neighborhood. If the basic foundations of Russia's macro strategy in relation with Armenia are focused upon national interests and national security, the priority aspects of EU-Armenia relations are democracy, human rights, economic development, and cooperation. When in 1992, Russia's new strategy was developed, the geographical area of the former Soviet Union was called as the field of Russia's national security interests. It has focused on the strategic importance of the South Caucasus from the very first days of the Soviet collapse, and the successor country of the USSR claimed a special role in the Caucasus geopolitics. The European Union from the other side involved the region into its economic and political agenda in 2009, launching the Eastern Partnership Program of the European Neighborhood Policy. This was considered by Moscow as a penetration to its traditional sphere of influence. 
The response reaction was Moscow's broad uh, foreign policy ambition, the Eurasian Economic Union Initiative in the post-Soviet space, which is an exclusive opposition to the EU's EAP policy. Here, it is worth mentioning that after 2008, Armenia had balanced politics with both the EU and Russia. Its, uh, its relations were mostly constructive because the West didn't explicitly challenge Russia's influence in the post-Soviet area. By the mid-2000s, however, the, the nature of relations between the EU and Russia had begun to change due to a lot of factors, including the transition to a more authoritarian regime in Russia and the EU's ENP policy and the mentioned uh, Eastern Partnership project. Yet, Armenia was still able to keep the balance between these two. Let's say being a member of the CIS meant that it was involved in the EU's EAP program. Being Russia led CSTO member, Armenia was developing its relations with NATO. But September 2013 demonstrated who is Armenia's political um, and economic priority ally, de facto rejecting the EU's offer of an association agreement. Armenia still kept the door open for deeper relations with the EU. Despite the fact that Armenia signed a comprehensive and enhanced partnership, ag partnership agreement with the EU in November 2017, it doesn't mean that Russia's leverage is diminished. Yet, it says that Armenia is trying to keep its dually balanced policy. But let's remember that the decision choice made in September 2013 was shocking and as my professor, my teacher, Petros Hovansan from the Yerevan State University was saying, you need to research historical events within the time frame when they had happened. Because if you analyze them from the current perspective, why, like, uh, the historical reality will be distorted. And last but not least, the main question raised while I examined these events relates to the small state's awareness of their importance in relation to the hegemonic interest of the superpowers in regional geopolitics of the South Caucasus, where the interests of involved parties are met in order to strengthen bilateral relations or alliances. Thank you very much. No. <laughs> so much. Thank you very much, uh, Marina. You uh, covered a great deal of material in a relatively short period of time. Yeah. No mean